dance and sing, even though I can't sing uh, all day. But uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining everyone. Thank you. Vicky, I am wonderful. Thank you for joining. Hi, Yarnell. How are you? How are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all are up on this beautiful, gorgeous Saturday morning. It's so wonderful to see each of you. We're going to go ahead and get started on today. Everyone wants to live a life of enjoyment. Everyone wants to live a life of health. And everyone wants to live a life of peace. But no one has figured out how until now the answer is simple alignment is key alignment is key to living a life of enjoyment alignment is key to living a life of health alignment is key to living a life of peace and when i speak of the word alignment i'm referring to your spirit your mind and your body all working harmoniously towards the progression of who you 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 and you were created to be i am Jane is Green, your spirit, mind, and body strategist. And I invite you to take a walk with me along this spiritual journey I call life so that together we get to rediscover who we truly are. Thank you, Broussard. Good morning. How are you? Let's go ahead and bow our heads for our prayer. Father God, I thank you for this opportunity to be used by you. Father God, I ask that you increase while I decrease. Father God, I ask you to guide my every thought, my every word, and my every move. Allow all that I do be pleasing in your sight. Father God, I ask you to take permanent residency within me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, Father. I ask you to have your way. Father God, I ask you to bless each person who pops on, who logs on, who watches the replay. Meet them right where they are. Father God, give them all that they need so that they can become all that you, Father God, have ordained them to become. I ask you to bless each person with excellent health, abundant wealth, and unspeakable joy. Father God, as I open my mouth, I ask you to fill it with your words. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Hi, Joseph. That's Skylar. How are you, Skylar? Classmate. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining on today. Um, I would be remiss to not say anything about last weekend. I'm so grateful, thankful, and humbled and appreciative of all of the well wishes that you all have extended to me for my birthday. It was simply amazing. I cannot put into words the experience that I was blessed to have encountered on my birthday. Um, you, most of you, if not all of you, absolutely love Oprah and to see her and to feel her energy is, is simply phenomenal. Uh, there were 12,000 people in the State Forum Arena uh, and I can definitely believe that. And one of the things that I want, well, no, I'm not going to tell you. And I hate to do that, but I don't want to spoil it for those of you who will go to one of her other tours. But it was simply amazing. I had a blast. So thank you. I'm grateful. I thoroughly enjoyed my birthday. And I want to welcome each of you to the month of February 2020. It's the month of love. Can you sense the love in the air? Maybe not yet, but hopefully soon. Our foundation scripture is going to come from 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, and it's from the NIV. It reads thusly, whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Second time, whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Okay, let's get started. Some people absolutely love the month of February because they get to celebrate their romantic love. They get to celebrate familiar love and friendship love. But there are others they are not so keen on this month of February. And it could be for a variety of reasons. It could be because they don't like the commercialism that surrounds February 14th. And or it could be because they have not quite connected with that individual that they know should be in their life. 
that individual that maybe they're better have or someone in their life that would make their life that much more enjoyable. <clears throat> so we have a variety of reasons of loving and or hating the month of February. And if you notice, I use two contrasting words, which is love and which is um, hate. So one of the things I wanted to point out is that um, life is full of polarities. And I feel my mind going very, very fast, so I have to slow down. Life is filled with polarities. They're filled with opposites. And just because there is an opposite in our life doesn't necessarily mean that one is positive and or good and the other one is negative and or bad. Just think, it, just think of it as if I was holding up a stick. And on one end of the stick was left and on the other end of the stick was right. Neither one is positive nor negative, but they're just on two opposite ends of the stick. Another example, hot and cold. I'm drinking tea this morning, which is quite hot. And some people prefer to drink their tea cold. Neither one is right nor wrong. So we want to take that concept and apply it to love. Oftentimes, whenever we hear the, love, the word love, we think of the opposite which I thought for a very long time was hate. But as I progressed and continued to live and learn, love is not the opposite of hate. Love is actually the opposite of fear. And when I heard that for the first time, I said, well, that doesn't make any sense. And God said, well, keep living and I'll reveal to you what you need to know. So as I continued on and I continued to ponder the idea of love being the opposite of fear, examples began to surface in my life. And then I started to kind of reflect on some of my past life experiences. Before I go another further, I do have a guiding question. And the guiding question, and I'm gonna type it in here, and it's just a question to kind of keep you on task and focus and to allow you to come to a decision at the end of this message. So this is something different, obviously, that I am incorporating. The guiding question reads, can you truly know an idea and or concept without first experiencing its opposite? And I typed it in. Can you truly know an idea or a concept without first experiencing its opposite? So that's the question that I want you to be able to answer. There is no right or wrong answer. Feel free to answer if you like. You don't necessarily have to, but that's something that I want you to think about throughout this particular message. So whenever I started grappling with the idea of love being the opposite of fear, one of the things that I came to realize was that both love and fear can be viewed as negative or as positive. Let's just take the example of love. Most of us, the majority of us, feel that love is a very positive feeling because it makes us feel good, warm, and fuzzy. But then love sometimes can be used in a not so good way. Let's just take, for example, someone who is head over heels in love with another individual and come to find out that something has gone terribly wrong with one of the individuals and the person feels, oh, you know what? I can no longer live this life without him or her. And you know, I'm telling the story of Romeo and Juliet. I'm an English teacher. So at the end, you know that they both die because they're madly in love with each other and they couldn't fathom living their life without one another. So that's an example of love being used in a not so good way. Let's take fear. Oftentimes you hear fear is something that we should avoid. Fear is something that we should uh, ignore. Fear is something that uh, we should not embrace. However, I didn't know I had this relationship with fear until I started grappling with the idea of love and fear being opposite. One of the things that I know I use as a motivator in my life is fear. 
and I'm accustomed to how fear makes my body feel. And when I get that sensation in my body, then I know that it's time for me to act. It's time for me to do something completely different because I'm not going to allow fear to defeat me. So oftentimes I've used fear to motivate me to move or fear to give me a sense of urgency. And I've done that both in my personal life as well as in my professional life. Um, for those of you who are recent you know, followers of this Facebook Live series, you know that it's only been on for a year. And right before I started, I was, I was afraid, I was fearful, and I did not like the way fear was treating my body. So I knew I had to do something, even though I knew I wasn't fully ready to start the Facebook Lives, I did it anyway, because fear to me is a motivation to get started with what it is that I don't want to get started on. So that's just an example of how I use fear as a motivator in my life. So make sure you understand just because one is on one end of your spectrum and the other one is on the other end of a spectrum doesn't mean that one is necessarily good and the other one is necessarily bad. And I just want to speak a little bit more about that fear aspect because I don't, I don't want individuals to see it as something that is a detriment to your success. It depends on your perception and how you view it and how you use it. Professionally, and I think this was the, the biggest and probably the best lesson that I've learned, particularly in my uh, professional career. Ever since I've been in the education sector, in, in the teaching profession, and it's mainly due to the God-given talents and gifts that he has placed on the inside of me and partially due to my work ethic. But early in my teaching career, all the way until the middle of it, I've always heard the word yes. And that's all I was accustomed to hearing the word yes in my professional career. But it was based on the natural talent that I had and based on my work ethic. But then you, you will come to a point, or I had come to a point, to where I had stopped growing. I was almost stagnant because I had done like a lot of things early on in my career. So God said, you know what, it's time for a change. So that change of yes turned to no. And, you know, an occasional no is okay. But to hear the word no, for seven consecutive years, oh, that's a very humbling experience. But what God had to do within those seven years, yes, first he did, he had to humble me. He had to make sure that, look, you are not operating in your own little talent um, and you're not growing. So he had to put a stop to the yes and he implemented that no. But what I learned after reflecting on that period, I learned that all of the positions that I applied for, all of the titles that I wanted, the awards that I submitted applications for, the accolades that I sought, all of those things I desired for the wrong reasons. Therefore, they were denied. And because I was so used to hearing yes, I didn't know how to take denial. It was very hard for me to wrap my head around. And for a moment there, I had to question, well, wait a minute, am I really doing what I was called to do? Because I had heard no for so long, seven consecutive years. That's a very long time to hear no. But during that time, and God is always going to be with you in that valley experience. It's just up to you to be aware of what's going on and to not, to not stay there mentally. I mean, you may be there physically, but not to stay there mentally. So I allowed God to do the work in and through me during those seven years. And all of those no's I kind of wrote down. 
And after about year three, I heard no, but I saw no differently. I saw no as meaning next opportunity. So I knew whatever that no was in that moment for that position, for that title, for that award, for that athlete, that no simply mean no, this is not for you, or no, Jane, you're not ready. So after those four years and the seven, seventh year came, did the no's immediately turn into yes? Absolutely not. They did not. But the thing was, I was a changed person from the beginning to that end. And that change is what God wanted to take place. When that no came after, it was, it was almost as if I smiled or I embraced it because I knew that whatever it was that I was being prepared for has not come yet. So I used that fear professionally to make me move into the direction that God had ordained me to. And sometimes none of it is going to make sense. Well, none of it made sense to me until after the fact. I thought for a second I was losing my mind, but I really wasn't. And then I thought it was everyone else around me doing whatever it was I thought was being done to me, but it wasn't. It was just God doing a work in and through me. So whenever you're experiencing the opposites of anything, don't view them as, oh, this is really, really good, or oh, this is really, really bad. Just view them as two different ends of a spectrum. And know that once it's over, God is going to reveal to you what it is he needs you to do. So as I went through that, and as I grew, and as I changed, and as I realized that God was truly working in and through my life, in the valley, not on the mountaintop, that was something that I had to accept. So during that seven year period, I had to come to grips with who I was because oftentimes I used to show up or behave as a people pleaser. I wanted to make sure that everyone around me was happy and I wanted to make sure that I was doing everything that everyone else wanted me to do, which may not have been necessarily what I wanted to do. So God had to. He had to isolate me and he had to take everything away from me that was familiar so that I can come to grips with who I am. So that was one of the things. Before you can actually love yourself, you're going to have to know who you are. And you're going to have to know who you are by knowing who your father is. Even though I had started reading the Bible since I was 16, I still had not had that intimate, deep relationship with God. It was on a surface level. And oftentimes you don't, which is not good, oftentimes you don't develop that deep, intimate relationship with God until you're in the valley. So during that seven year period, he kind of revealed who he is to me. And when I learned who he was, then and only then was I able to know who I was. So the first thing you want to make sure you do whenever you're learning to love yourself is to know who your father is. Females, one of the things that I've come to appreciate, and I didn't know for a very long time, well into my adulthood years, was that a female needs the love of her father. And if a female doesn't know her father, then she's going to wreak havoc on everybody and everything around her, including herself. But when a female knows who her father is and receives her father's love, that female is going to show up confident that female is going to show up as her authentic life-giving self. That female is going to show up as who she truly is. And it took me a very long time to realize that. But then as, as God do that work and reveal to you what it is he wants you to know, it's eye-opening. It's freeing and it, it opens up life for you. So that's the first thing. What it means to love yourself 
is to first make sure you know who you are. And in order to know who you are, you're going to have to know who your father is. And that is your father, God. Step number two, self-love means knowing how to move through life unapologetically you. Now, if you don't know who you are, you're going to move through life based on other people's opinions of who they think you are. And you're going to continuously change everything you do to please other people. I know because I was one of those individuals. But when you know who you are and you know who your father is, you begin to show up unapologetically as your authentic self. And in order to do that, you're going to have to make sure that you have accepted all of your mistakes. And whenever you accept all your mistakes, you're going to have to forgive yourself. Now, females, and I know you males, and I'm not trying to leave you out, but Speaking to the females just right now, we've made a lot of mistakes. Males, you've made them too. But females, there is one mistake that you know you have made that it took you the longest to forget and to forgive yourself for. Whatever that mistake is, you need to identify it first. Write it down. Once you identify it, you need to accept it. You need to own it. Yes, I did X, Y, Z. No, I'm not proud of it. And once you do that, you need to release it. You need to forgive yourself. You need to know that if God forgives you, and he has, you have, it, you have what's in you to forgive yourself. And that's one of the things that keeps us from moving into the purpose that God has ordained for us is that we can't forgive ourselves. Oftentimes, particularly females, we will forgive everyone else around us, but we will hold on to that one mistake that we made for years and years and years, and we can't move forward until we actually own that mistake and then we forgive our mistakes. So that is number two, own your mistakes and forgive yourself. Oh, so strategy number three is to make sure that you are showing up <clears throat> unapologetically as you. And when you do this, you have to do it with a sense of courage. You're going to feel the fear, but you're still gonna do it anyway. And you have to do it with a sense of boldness and confidence. Not because of you're all that and nobody else is, but because you know that God lives within you. And when you know who you are, who your father is, when you know that you have made mistakes, but you have forgiven yourself, then and only then can you show up unapologetically, authentically you. And when you do that, God is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out so many blessings, which may be health, which may be opportunities, which may be finances, which may be encounters, which may be experiences. But you have to know who you are so that you can show up in this world for others. Because regardless of what you think or what you don't think, somebody is always watching you. And being that we are females, we are nurturers, we are life givers, we need to make sure that we are first loving ourselves so that we can teach those, particularly our little ones or anybody that we come in contact with, teaching those how to love others. If you have not learned and if you do not learn to love yourself, you're not going to be able to truly love anyone else. And... I would like to say our ultimate goal is to have that unconditional love for others. And you know, our Father God has that for us. I know for me, I have messed up time and time and time and time and time and time again. But because of his unconditional agape love, he has forgiven me 
and he has loved me unconditionally even though i have faults i have hang-ups i'm not perfect in the flesh he still loves me regardless and i know being a female sometimes it's a little challenging for us to love unconditionally especially if we've been hurt in the past because sometimes we like to put on that those same lens and place it on everyone, particularly men, and view them through that lens, which may not necessarily be the case. Oftentimes it's not the case. But because we have experienced something somewhere else, we like to take that with us onto the next relationship. So there are some things that um that I know as females and as I know as me right now that I still need to work on. And I'm working towards that unconditional love. And boy, what I tell you, that's a challenge. Oh, that is a challenge. But um, you keep going and keep going and keep going and you never give up. So let's just go on to, um, let's just recap. Um, my son is up and he's not up usually this, this, this early. Nevertheless, he must have had a lot of rest. Nevertheless, what does it mean to love yourself? There are three things or three definitions that I use that describe what self-love means. The first one is knowing who you are and knowing who your father is, your father God is. And oftentimes, whenever we know who God is, because he dwells within us, we will know who we are without a shadow of a doubt. So definition number two, self-love is owning every one of our mistakes and then forgiving ourselves. Step number three is showing up unapologetically as our authentic self. So with that being said, hi, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Renee, how are you? I saw a beautiful picture of you, Renee. It was a black and white picture. You had your hair pulled back. Gorgeous picture. Gerald, how are you? Thank you. Mashika, hi, how are you? She's a hometown girl. Yes, yes. Hi, Donna. My uh, partner with um, LAE. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Charlene, thank you, thank you. Good morning, good morning, blessed morning. Sam, thank you, thank you. Natasha, hi, how are you? Tina, thank you. I'm so grateful you decided to join today. Kim, thank you, thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Mary, hi, hi, hi. Paul, how are you? And Blake, thank you, thank you. Thank you all so much for joining. We're in the month of February, the month of love. And we're gonna talk about self-love. We're gonna come up with some, well, I'm going to identify some strategies of how we can show love to ourselves. No, I'm not gonna be self selfish which is actually not being selfish when you show love to yourself. It's being selfless. But I'm not going to show, I'm not going to have every Saturday in this month about ourselves. I'm going to make sure that I do incorporate how to show love towards those individuals who are very, very close to us. So with that being said, oh, we have some more. Morning, blessed morning, all. Oh, we love y'all. Y'all are so absolutely wonderful I, I feel your energy and that's phenomenal phenomenal so we're going to go ahead and close if there are no other hellos comments but remember the question the guiding question you can answer if you want it's not it's not mandatory it's just recommended just so you have an idea of what your thoughts are it's just getting to a decision at the end of this message which is can you truly know a concept or an idea without first experiencing its opposite? I talked about love. Uh, we've all experienced love. I have experienced love. And we learned that love is the opposite of fear. Can you truly know love without experiencing fear? Yes, no, maybe so. Who knows? But I'm going to go ahead and close. Remember, life is a gift that keeps on giving. And every day that you are afforded the opportunity to open your eyes, 
visualize the life you desire to live. And you do this by keeping your spirit aligned with the one and true spirit. And that is God. By keeping your mind stayed on things that are good and by keeping your body in a constant, consistent, conscious groove. Remember to love the person in front of you. Remember to love the person behind you. Remember to love the person to the left of you. And remember to love the person to the right of you. And know that I love each and every one of you. Remember to spend some time in nature. Go out, do something wonderful on this beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, phenomenal Saturday. And I will see you next Saturday at 7 a.m. Bye-bye. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your day.